it's almost spring, bitch! What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the show. Things are heating up outside, and I'm on a hustle to get this bike ready for spring. So today, I'm hoping to build the swing arm, get that installed on the frame, and then I want to build the front forks and get those installed on the frame. So that's all coming up right now on Saturday's Rents. You guess? Wrench, wrench, Welcome to Saturday's Rents. All right, guys, so we're going to start with the swing arm here. You want the swing arm facing uh, up like you installed it on the bike. So when you're driving, there's a left and a right because there is a right and left bushing. So this one uh, will fit here. You can see that and it won't fit here. You could see that it's just too small. So there's a left and a right bushing. These are brand new. Nice, uh, nice bushings here. I smashed the crap out of the other ones getting them off. Um, so I have my swing arm bolt ready to go. I've uh, replaced the Zerk, the grease Zerks here. So those are modern uh, grease Zerks. We got those uh, drilled, drilled a really slowly drilled a hole and then tapped it with a one millimeter M8 tap. And uh, these are one, uh, M8 one millimeter uh, brass Zerks. So I found these online for like five bucks on eBay. You can find them, uh, brass just lasts longer. Same with this, the bushings here are brass. You saw me replace those in another episode. So uh, this is all ready to go. I've Loctited these nipples, these Zerks in, uh, in place with red Loctite. So those aren't, hopefully those aren't going anywhere. Um, and I've, I have a grease gun. I've already set up my grease gun and filled the cavity with grease. I've made sure before I did that, that they were extremely clean. I clean them out, with, I sprayed it in there with brake cleaner and with compressed air. So get all those metal shavings out. You definitely do not want metal shavings in your swing arm. Uh, that would cause a lot of problems. So this is all ready to go. I greased up the bolt and uh, I filled the cavities up with grease. I have had my swing arm in the oven here for about an hour, half an hour, hour at about three, 350. Just warming it up just so I can expand the brass and the metal here. And these have been in the freezer, so they, in essence, will have shrank down so I can get them into the into the bore here. So what I'm going to do is just grease these up, give them a nice coating of grease so they just helps with insulation. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to use a, rab, a rubber mallet to bang it into place. So I'm make, double making sure that this is my right side, so my my uh, bushings for the, the the rear shocks are pointing up so I know that this is the way it, it's installed on the bike so I'll just grease this up and try and get it in here so this swing arm is pretty hot so I'm just using a rag here I'm just going to use a rubber mallet and nail this into place here and this should go in pretty simply So this is all ready to go. Those bushings went in there pretty nicely. I am just going to let it cool down a little bit and then we'll move over to the bike and we'll get it installed on the back of the bike. All right guys, so we're on the side of the uh, frame here, the back of the frame, I'm gonna install the swing arm. And I, what I've done is just taken a little bit of paint off both sides. So I've been careful not to take any material off the, the frame itself, but the just remove the paint here on both sides so I have my swing arm ready to go I uh, so we make sure you put it the right way up so the two bushings at the back here go up face upwards those are your for your rear shocks so um, what you want to do now is for these rubber bushings so the way that these work these rubber dust seals they're gonna fit over when the brass and the frame make contact so these two points on the frame this point will make contact with the metal and then this you'll see on the frame here there's these little grooves right along this little piece right here and those little rubber uh, these little rubber seals they fit over it so there's a little lip and you'll see it'll all make sense to you when you go and do this so just make sure you have the seals a little bit out of the way you can see I push them up out of the way a bit so that I can slip the uh, the swing arm in so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this in place so that's nice and then 
the seal, just slip it over the frame and you'll feel it, you'll feel it go into the groove that it's meant, that it's meant for it. It'll actually hold it in place a little bit for you. So uh, make sure your one dust cap is on the other side. So there's a cap that goes on the end of here. I've left it off of this side because uh, I have a feeling that when I po poke it through, it'll just pop it off. So I left it off on this side. And also, you want to make sure you have your brackets. So I have, there's two brackets that go here and on the other side too. So make sure, make sure you, those are in place. So, so I have the other one on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead, sw uh, slide the bolt through. I'm just going to add a little bit of grease to the bolt just to help it on. The way that these go on is that you could see there's like a little, there's like a curved part. That curved part goes at the top. So this is the one for the right side of the, of the motorcycle here. So I have it on, I'm gonna slide my, the bolt has to go through that and, and the swing arm at the same time. I'm just gonna use a rubbered mallet and a dowel on the bolt. Just being careful not to hit the, the nipple, the grease zerk. So I'm just gonna use that and just hammer it. So I'm just making sure my bracket on this side is in place. That looks good. Okay, so the next thing that goes on is this uh, kind of like this seal here. So that's in place. So just make sure your threads are nice and clean. It might have picked up some grease or dirt or something. Or scraped the paint. So just make sure the it's all nice and clean here. Maybe just add some grease on the inside. Can't hurt it. And that'll just help that slide into place also. A little more grease on the the dust seals, just make sure they're both over the groove here. So that's really just protecting dust to get in there. The next thing goes on the seal. And these just press right into place. Just like that. So that's looking good. Everything's working pretty nice. get this bolt in place so I'm just gonna tighten it up I have my torque wrench on the other side I have a torque spec for this it's 40 to 50 foot-pounds I'm just gonna get it a little tighter and then I'll adjust that bracket once I got it so 40 to 50 foot-pounds Again, just making sure your brackets are nice and straight. It's starting to look good. And there are some bolts that go. I'm just going to, it's nice and tight. It's nice and snug right now. I'm not going to torque it up because I still need to put the bolts in here. And um, I can't remember where they are right now. But that's 40 to 50 foot pounds on that. And I will get that later. So that's looking pretty good. The swing arm seems to be moving. It's getting pretty tight, but once I bolt everything in, it should be uh, it should be all good. So that's nice and solid now. Swing arm's not moving anywhere, and it still moves up and down really nice. So that's good. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side, and we'll tor torque this bolt up. All right, now that my brackets are firmly in place on both sides I'll be able to torque this wrench a lot easier so you can see the swing arm still moving that's good my dust seals are all good my seals are all in place so I just have the torque wrench on the other side here set to 40 foot pounds I'm gonna hold my adjustable wrench here and give it opposite opposite force so I'm just gonna slowly work up to the torque That's 40, recommended 40 to 50 foot pounds. So I'm just gonna bring it up to 45.
There you go. So that's 45 foot pounds. It's all good. The swing arm's in there. Looks pretty good, guys. Still moves. Doesn't not make any weird noises or anything. So now I'm just gonna fill it with grease. So I'm gonna fill the nipples with grease here. Alright, it's starting to come out a little bit at the top, so I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but but now I know that's really packed up. Cool guys, so that's looking pretty good. We got a swing arm on the bike. You can tell it's moving up and down. Everything seems pretty good. Let's move on guys, let's not stop here. We'll get the maybe the engine side or we'll start with the forks. All right guys, so now to the starting clutch. That's the next thing I, I wanna do because I wanna get the engine all finished up, get the covers on there and everything finished up and then I'll move on to the forks. So this is your starting clutch. I'm gonna try and re-put this back together. Hopefully it works out. Um, you have these dowel kind of like these pins here and then these springs and these little uh, caps they're called these basically the spring sits inside this little cap uh, I don't know if you can see that but it goes inside like this and then this cap kind of gets pushed in by this pin and it kind of sits in there all like that inside of the inside of the starter clutch so I've gone ahead and replaced these rollers they're called rollers so I've gone ahead replaced these rollers so those are new and then I, I was gonna leave everything else but I kind of noticed that my springs that go inside the cups the caps there I'm just noticing that they were all kind of different lengths and and they were just they looked really kind of old and ratty so I just went ahead and ordered new ones um, if you need uh, the reference number for that here you go so there's three of these so you'll see the new springs here and this old spring and I'll just try and show you so you could see there that's the old one that's the new one so they're just the old ones are just really compressed they look a little worn so I just thought it was a good idea to replace those so just don't want to get anything mixed up so I have my old ones I'm gonna put those aside um, the spring just goes inside the cap here and there's a little space inside the starting clutch for it and if you've ever taken one of these apart you'll know what I'm talking about so I'm gonna do so I just have that started I don't know if you could see it in there so that's just sitting in there then I, my next challenge is trying to get the, the roller in there. So I just have to move that aside. Slip in the roller. So I use, using a little pick, or you could use this. Actually, you know what would be better? It's a flathead screwdriver. And I'll just slip in my roller. So I just got that pushed aside. You're probably not going to be able to see this, but... You'll, if you ever try this, it does make a lot of sense. And the goal is basically to get it butted up against the starter, the little roller like that. So you have your spring, the, the cap that goes, touches the spring so you could see that. It's basically just holding that in place. So I'm going to do that for all three and then we'll get this spindle on. So you can see all three of those in place now. And you can see how those uh, fit in there. So that's looking good. Now I'm just going to stick the spindle on. And this might be a little tricky to do. I think you need to move these things out of the way. Alright, so I figured out what my problem was. I had the pins in wrong. They don't sit in there like that. See how mine's sitting in there like that? They don't sit in there like that. Here, I'll show you how they sit in there. This is how not to do it, how I had it before. This is how they go. See the difference? So yes, no. 
So that's why it wasn't going together for me. So doy, I forgot. It's very tricky to put together, but it's try it's hard to remember. That's why you got to take a lot of pictures. Take a lot of pictures when you're taking your bike apart of everything, and just keep them handy. What I do on my computer, I keep a folder for build reference, and I constantly am looking and referring to it. And you want to keep it on like a like somewhere like I have it on my Google uh, Photos, so I can access the photos anytime, like when I'm in the garage or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead, put them in properly like this. And around and uh, once I do I'll be right back all right so this is how they sit once I so I have all the pins in so this is how they all sit in there can you see those to spin it as you're putting it on so I imagine the movement of the pins that have the movement of the uh, little caps and the, um, the rollers they roll that way so it looks like it's counterclockwise so there we go. So you can see it only spins counterclockwise. It's a one it's a one way clutch, so it won't allow it to spin in the other direction. Cool, so that's all in. We'll get this on the side of the engine now. Okay guys, so we're just on the left side of the engine here. That's where this bad boy goes, just slips onto there. Before we can do that, there's this little keeper little uh, pin that goes in, slides into the groove on the end of the crankshaft. So it goes, the half moon sh side goes down and the flat part sticks up. And then there's a corresponding groove inside here. You could see that. And that slides into this now. Okay, so that's, that keeper is on the end of the crankshaft. I've double checked everything. I'm just gonna visually line up the the groove here with that groove here, with this keeper. I feel like I'm docking a space station right now. And then there's a bolt that goes on. It's a 14 mil bolt. When I, uh, on the other side of the engine, once I uh, get that oil slinger, the, the tabs for the oil slinger bent up, now that I don't have them luckily bent up, I can, uh, what I'll do is I'll get in on the other side so I can torque this down. But this is in there for now and it's looking pretty good. So that's on, that's installed. I was going to put the cover on, but I don't have my starter ready yet and that uh, has a little spindle on the end that uh, there's a chain that goes around both connects both so I don't have the starter yet So I'm not gonna put the cover on because I'm just gonna have to take it off anyway, so that's good for now We're gonna move on to the forks next so that's gonna be pretty exciting to do so let's build some forks So where I'm gonna start is just cleaning this out So what I have is just a rag here and I have this uh, wooden dowel so What I do is just wrap it around this dowel here Get it in there Let's get it nice and clean. You want to make sure that's all nice and clean in there. So get nice and clean in there. So I'm just going to get this stuff a little bit out of the way. I have my, I went with the all balls on this one. I have some new seals because I ordered everything together. So. All right, so I'm all set up. I have my two f new f seals here, and these are just gonna go into the fork boot here. Um, it's got a little bit of fork oil on the side here, so I'm just gonna just kind of lube up the inside a little bit. Hopefully that'll help it out. Um, with these, um, they come uh, out of the package, and you could see writing on one side, and on the other side it has no writing. So uh, the writing goes up, so because uh, at the bottom there's like a double little lip, and you want to put that towards the oil. It, it actually says that on the back of the package here. So just uh, just be careful to put these in the right way. So you want the writing here. I could see it on the top. I'm not sure if you can, um, but you want to put the writing towards the top. So I'm just going to get a little oil on this just to help it. 
get in there. What I have is my old seals here. So I'm just gonna use my old seal to help drive in my new seal. So it seems to be working pretty good. A little crooked. All right, so I, that's pretty much sitting in there. What you want to do is just get it below where that uh, circlip sits. So um, you can see the groove that, that's exposed enough. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and get my circlip in here. The circlip's in there. That's one down, one to go. Circuits all installed. Looking good, that's number two. So now we can get the dampers in there and start building these forks up. All right, all set up to do my front suspension here, guys. We're gonna build some forks. Pretty excited about this. I went ahead and bought new chrome tubes just for the front forks. Um, you can find them on eBay and there's a source online. Just Google it, I'm sure you'll find them. Um, I just don't want to recommend them because they just weren't the best customer service and they gouged you. The price was just astronomical. So, gone ahead and replaced the chrome tubes, fork tubes here. You could see the old one here. This was just too pitted and rusted. Um, there is no saving that with anything unless you re-chrome it and re-chroming it is about the same price as it costs to buy a new one. So I just went ahead and bought new ones and I'm glad I, I glad I did that. They turned out really nice. So uh, with the front suspension, the springs, I've upgraded those as well. Um, you can see my stock spring here. So this is my stock spring and this is my new spring. I've already sort of uh, installed this just to get things, get the ball rolling a little bit. But you can see the difference between these two. You can see the coil itself is a little thicker. So it's a, just a overall a beefier spring it's a it's rated to my weight and a, it's just a stronger a little better quality metal and um, just a nice product altogether so I was really happy with this and with the front spring what it comes in the box here is um, you can see this it comes with some PVC pipe and some washers so with the PVC pipe you need to cut a spacer in order to get a certain measurement of the preload on the spring so um, and then with the washers, the washer just sits in between the spring and the spacer here just so that the spring itself is not riding up against that PVC pipe. And then it comes with instructions. This uh, all was really confusing to me, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I did, I was able to identify my type of spring. So I have a type A here where it rides right up against the bolt more or less. Um, so what I needed to do was figure out my preload. So it was recommended, I, I had to call Race Tech, um, and what they recommended was a 15 millimeter preload. So, you know, th that made me think that maybe I needed to cut the spacer to 15 millimeters, and that's not the case because a 15 millimeter spacer is not going to preload this uh, by 15 millimeters. So, what you do is you measure the spring when it's at its free length. So, I've already gone ahead and done all this. So uh, you just measure the spring when it's not preloaded, just when, when it's basically off the stand or off the damper like this. So I just measured it with the millimeter tape measure here, and that, what it was was it was 400 millimeters. Um, and then so I knew I needed so uh, with a 15 millimeter preload, this fork needs to be compressed to 385 millimeters, which it is here. So you, I'm not sure if you you probably can't see it from up there, but it's um, so when so now the fork right here is preloaded. So this spacer, I figured out that I needed to cut a 20 millimeter spacer in order to preload this spring, 15 millimeters. So that's all that's bottomed out on the thread. This is all set. My uh, my fork is my fork spring is 385 millimeters. So that's all good to go. So I just. I had to practice that a few times. It took a little bit of time to get that right. So that's all set up and ready to go. So I'm gonna get this old stuff out of the way and then we'll get on to building the forks uh, with, the, with the way they are now. 
Okay, so I removed my spring here because I need to uh, measure the fork oil and I can't measure the fork oil while the spring's inside there. So what I'm gonna do is just get my damper installed into the fork boot and then just put it in a little angle. I've already, ha I already got some oil in there so the seal's a little bit lubed up a bit so um, that slid in really nice for me. And what I wanna do is just get my bottom fork bolt on and you can see that here, I've cleaned this up really nice and I've gotten a new copper washer for this. So that's a sweet new washer. You wanna replace those just simply because they're, they crush when you, when you tighten them and it kind of forms like a nice little seal. So it's, if it's already crushed and been sitting there for a long time, it's probably it's good to replace those because they'll form a nice new seal on your, the bottom of your fork here and that's really important because you don't have that, the oil's just gonna get everywhere. Just make sure everything's really nice and clean. I'm just gonna check that part again. So my bolt here, and that's all ready to go. I'm just gonna apply some blue Loctite to this. Let's go ahead and get this into the bottom of the damper here. What I will do is get that in the vise and clamp that right down. Uh, now the next thing I wanna do is get my fork tube in there. Um, but just before that, I just want to show you that I have replaced my, my, my drain bolt here and I have a new copper washer here. So you can see that it's nice and shiny. It's looking pretty good. So that's sitting in there. The damper, the bolt on the bottom is in there. We'll get the tube in there. See that right there, boys? It's not a bong hole, all right? It's a drain hole. Put it in the bottom. So that's your drain hole. You want to put that in the bottom, obviously. You knew that, right? I have to tell you guys shit. Now what I want to do, so I have my that little rounded knot there. So what I'm going to do is put this top bolt on so that I could so I can just grab the damper rod. Just enough to crush the washer down here and just get that nice and snug. You don't want your oil coming out of there. So get this out of the way and then we'll measure some oil. All right, before I do anything else, what I need to do is measure the oil amount. And um, the way I want to do that is I'm going to fill it up with oil without the, 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 without the spring in there. I'm going to fill it with oil enough just so it comes to like maybe here or something. Maybe here or something around there. And then what I'm going to do is stick my syringe in there. So it was recommended to me that my... I take 140 millimeters from the top of the spring with the fork fully collapsed. So fully collapse the spork, or fork, you can see that I'm fully collapsing the fork. And then what I'm going to do while it's upright obviously is uh, take this and I have a little line on my tube just to measure 140 millimeters. So I'm going to suck it out and when it stops obviously that's going to be 140 millimeters from the top. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. So that's the method that was described to me by the manufacturers of the, of the suspension and they're the manufacturers. So I'm just going to go with their recommendation. So the fork tube is collapsed. I have some oil here. This is 20 weight oil, synthetic oil. It was recommended to me to use 20 weight. So that's what I'm using again, just recommended by the manufacturer. Gonna try and get it to fill up the damper a bit so I can get an accurate reading. And I can just lose this bolt here. I'll let this fall. I can just grab that out of there later. You can see that here. Starting to suck it out. I'm just gonna hold it straight up so I can get an accurate reading. So you can kind of hear the bubble, so it has nothing left to suck. Which is telling me that I know that there is 140 millimeters gone from the top. And that's probably pretty good. If it's a few millimeters off, it's not going to be the end of the world. I already have my other little piece in there that goes 
on the bottom of the fork damper between the damper and the two and the shock here, the spring. So I'm gonna get my spring in there. All right, so I have my spring installed here. Now I need to put my washer because my washer can't sit up against my PVC pipe. I can press everything down here. Put the PVC pipe on and then I have to put this top retaining spring, this retaining washer, and it goes with that little divot, that dowel thing that kind of locates the spring and the PVC pipe, so make sure that goes down. And then the flat side pointing up, just make sure this top retaining washer is just all the way at the bottom of the top of the threads here with your damper is. And that's, that's what, it's a little tricky to do, but just gotta pull this bad boy down get that seated okay I think that's pretty good so that's looking good so this top washer here is seated all the way at the end of the threads I have my spacer I have my washer just make sure everything's nicely lined up then I can go ahead and get my top bolt but before I do that I recommend actually in the manual to put some blue Loctite on the top of these threads here so we're just gonna go ahead and do that and I'm just gonna screw on my top bolt alright so I have my blue Loctite on here I'm gonna get my top bolt on I've replaced the o-ring in, in the top bolt as well but I'm having I can't clamp this down into the bike because I'm having some problems with the top clamp and I'll show you that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this fork off and then I'll show you the problem I'm having on the bike with the top clamp. Alright guys, so I got the top bolt on here. Um, what we, so I did this off camera just because it was really, it was a little bit tricky. The rod just kept spinning but if you give it enough pressure, so my dad just had a clamp and we clamped down the spring here and then we had, there was enough pressure on the rod that it wasn't spinning so then we got everything really tight so you could see the retaining washer is really tight with the bolt here and then I have my spacer then I have my washer and then I have my spring so that's all preloaded up it's all good to go a little bit of grease on the threads so just gonna snug this top bolt and the last thing I need to do is just put on the dust seal so I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on there just to help it stick in place. So my last thing to do is put on the dust seal and this is my old dust seal and it's still in really good shape so I didn't find a, a, I mean, any reason to replace this so just make sure if you're going to use the old parts just make sure they're, um, they're in good shape. This isn't cracked or anything. It's it's in pretty nice shape so just got a little bit of grease on it and I'm just going to slide it over the fork here and that should just squeeze into place actually and there's a home for that so and we're looking good so this is my fork it's all built up it's ready to go on the bike the reason I didn't torque this up on the bike itself was because I'm having some issues with my top clamp and I'm going to put this aside and show you what's going on with my top clamp right now. So I want to show you guys a little problem I ran to. Just a little wall, but I'm going to figure this out. I've already been in contact with the guys and we're going to get this sorted out. But you can see here my triple tree. My triple tree is fully installed here. And then I have my top threads. And then this is my uh, top clamp that I got from Cognito Moto. They do make good stuff. I've already installed it. You could tell I've already installed it here, but so when I put this on, you could see here, there's only a tiny here. So when I put this on and I'll show you here, let's lift you up a bit. There's only a tiny bit of thread showing and that is no good. That is not safe. This is a very strong point for the suspension is going to be, you know, that's that needs to be that you need to put a washer on there. That needs to be very safe. So there's simply just not enough space. And I've already taken a washer out of the whole mechan the whole 
ball bearing system in the neck and that is just not good at all so what they're gonna do for me here is just machine this down a little bit I'm gonna double check that I didn't install the bearings wrong here but just again a caution uh, like you got to be patient with this stuff right because I want this stuff to, to come together it was a little frustrating when I went to put this together but you got to double check all your aftermarket parts and you can just tell here that that amount of thread is just not good so I'm gonna have to go ahead send this back and uh, we'll get this machined up and then I'll be able to put the forks on at least we got the forks built but can't install them yet because of that problem I'm having with the top clamp. Well, we'll get this sent back. We're going to need a little bit of material removed from this section here. So I got to measure it a little bit just so the threads stick up a little higher and I can get a washer in there and get a proper torque on that because that's not very safe at all. That's going to be really loose and I don't want to ride that. So it could even break something. I don't know. I could break my face. I don't want to break my damn face. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today. We did a lot in this episode. We got the swing arm installed. Pretty cool to see that. I installed the uh, stator on the side of the engine there. The starting clutch. Uh, had a little bit of a trouble getting that together, but um, it came together in the end. Just remember to take a lot of pictures when you're taking a, your bike apart. If I can offer you any advice, trust me, take a lot of pictures from all sorts of different angles and good quality pictures because you're going to rely on those pictures later for the uh, for the rebuild. So once I get that top clamp all fixed up, got to get that machined, then we'll get the forks in place, and then I can put the wheels on. And that's going to be pretty exciting. So that'll be coming up in a future episode of Saturday's Ranch. So thanks guys for all your support. I really love in the emails you guys send me. And I love hearing about inspiring people to get out into the garage and work on their projects they've been kind of putting on the back burner for a while. So if I can do this, Anyone can do this, trust me. So really guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Until next time, get out there and wrench it up.